Well, amusingly enough, it's been a while since I was in one of my own videos. Just was thinking that earlier. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing these scenic videos and I haven't been in them. Um, that's okay. Uh, we're camped uh, between Durango and Silverton, Colorado right now. Still pretty much high country. I think we're we're over 7,000 feet. I think we're close to 8,000 feet here. I'll have to look it up for sure. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. But I stumbled while I was out walking around this morning. I knew it was a trail that ran through uh, basically our backyard of the camp. If you've seen uh, that video I put up about our tour of our camp, you'll see that mentioned. Um, well, I found a signboard here at the bottom of the trail, the trailhead. And this is the Wagon Road Historic Trail. There's also another one... Uh, the parallels, uh, you know, the other direction uh, from us. There's two different options. This one's about a mile long and runs up to Haviland Lake. And uh, the other one looks to be a little longer because it travels a different route. Uh, but I, I really wanted to hike this when I found it. This is a historic trail. Even though it's a hiking trail now, it was actually a wagon road uh, more than 100 years ago. When, and was it important for, you know, uh, commerce and for miners trying to get up into the various... Uh, you know, just look to strike your uh, strike your rich and, and uh, hit hit a big one on a mine around here. So that, this was an important road for him. So I'm really excited to uh, go hike it, and I have no idea what I'm going to see on here except for it's supposed to come out close to Haviland Lake State Park, and uh, you know, so you'll get to explore it with me. Uh, so let's go see what we can find. A wagon Road Historic Trail. Before the turn of the century, thousands of prospectors, traders, and fortune seekers traveled over these routes to enter the mineral-rich San Juan Mountains. Listen, and you might hear the sounds of mules straining under a heavy load, or the creak of a wagon wheel as it makes the grade on this one-mile section of this historic wagon road. Rice Rockwood Wagon Road and Animus Silverton wa Wagon Road. From 1876 to 1881, the Animus Silverton Wagon Road was the primary access road used by miners and freighters between Animus City and Silverton. During its brief existence, it served as the commerce lifeline for the region. In 1881, the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad purchased the route along the Animus River and constructed a rail line from the newly established community of Durango to Silverton. After the rail line reached Silverton, this route was developed as a toll road by Judge J.W. Pinkerton to link the railroad town of Rockwood, north of Durango, to the mining town of Rico. Toll fees for the Rico-Rockwood wagon road, which was 35 miles long, depended on what was traveling. A wagon drawn by one animal was two and a half cents per mile. A wagon drawn by two animals was 10 cents a mile. A trail wagon, five cents. Riding animal, two cents. Pack animal, one cent. Loose cattle, horses, mules, and burros, one cent. Sheep and hogs, three-quarter cent. Just look at the size of these ponderosa pines over here. These things are massive. I can't imagine how long they've been growing here in this forest. This is the first site of Elbert Creek. This is also a popular equestrian trail. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and the U.S. Forest Service, facing funding cuts and chronic staffing shortages, was unable to replace the sign to let travelers know which way to walk. I am back to the same junction where I had my little poem. Um, I went to the right. I came up from the left down here. And when I got to this junction, I turned right. Uh, went, went down this trail here. I thought, based on the best I could figure out with the maps I was looking at, that was going to take me where I wanted to go. Um, you know, I, I looked at a trail map here. 
uh, the Forest Service puts out before I get started. It has very basic information. Uh, it shows only two trails in this area. Uh, there are far more than two. There are multiple places, branches of the trail, and they are not on that map. I have the official Forest Service map for this region um, downloaded into Avenza, which is a GPS mapping program that, uh, you know, will pinpoint your location on compatible maps. So I can see exactly where I am in the forest using that, but the official map does not have these trails on it, even though they've obviously been around for a very long time. Um, I also have Google Maps, which actually shows some trails, but not all of them. And, you know, with a map downloaded in the background, I can use that with GPS, even if I don't have a cell signal out here. So, I, I mean, between those, those things, I know roughly where I am in relation to Haviland Lake and in relation to my campground. Uh, what I don't know is <laughs> where are the trails. <laughs> I don't know what trail I'm on because there are multiple trails out here. And they're not marked, uh, and there are no trail signs, um, you know, example right here. And, uh, you know, uh, they're not showing up on the maps. So I don't know. Uh, so I, I, I went down this way. Normally this would not even be a big deal, okay, part of the adventure. I was paying attention so I didn't get too far off the beaten path. Um, thing is, I'm short on time today. I uh, plan on breaking camp tomorrow heading south because the weather is getting ridiculously cold here at night and in the morning and in the evenings, but it's still quite warm during midday, which it is right now. So I almost didn't even do this hike because I'm short on time and I have a lot I have to do. Uh, but I wanted to do it. I figured it was only a mile each way. It'd be worth doing um, because of the historic uh, nature of the trail. So I thought it'd be fun to do. Um, but so I'm a little bit, you know, uh, frustrated at the lack of uh, trail signs and the fact that these trails are not on the maps because I'd like to be able to get where I'm going, get back and get some work done and get on the road tomorrow. But anyways, that's life when you go out hiking and adventure and you never know what's going to happen. So uh, I'm going to try this other one. This would have been a left. It's in front of me now. This would have been a left when I came to this junction before. And we'll see if this takes me where I need to go. And I think I may just walk back on the road once I get to the lake. There, see now at the risk of beating a dead horse here and uh, sort of sounding curmudgeonly or whatever, I've gone only a few yards from where I was just showing you that junction and I come up here and the trail splits yet again. And there is no trail markings at all of any sort to give any idea which one of these trails is the one I want to be taking to get over to the lake. And this is about the 10th time, I swear that this has happened uh, since I left this less than a mile ago. All right, so that trail sort of petered out halfway up this hill. Um, maybe I should have taken that one. I don't know at this point. I made it to the top of the hill. My guess was looking around here. Nice views though, aren't there? I mean, Colorado in the fall is just spectacular. The Aspen are starting to get past their peak, unfortunately, because they were just golden for a while. But anyway, looking around from up here, I was thinking, Right over this direction should be the lake and uh, that I'm trying to get to. So I looked up on uh, two different apps and a compass and they all tell me that that is northwest right over there and that's the direction that I should find the lake. I'm very close to it by the looks of it on the maps. So I hope that's the case. I'm going to strike out across there and we will see how it goes. Meanwhile, at least I've got some great scenery to enjoy while I'm wandering around in the forest bushwhacking. Well, I think I'm getting closer. It looks like an opening out there, so I'm hoping that's the lake. Now, I'll thwart it again. The stand of Aspen looks a little dense to try and push my way through. So I'm going to work my way to the right here a little bit, back into the pine forest. That looks easier to get through. Well, I made it up at long last. Uh, I took some bushwhacking, some inventiveness. I found a the trailhead. Uh, this is the other end of that wagon trail that I was on. Uh, the problem is, um, well, I finally figured out this is a heavily used trail by uh, with equestrian riders, horseback people, and uh, what happens is there there are multiple cases where I can see where they've uh, there's an offshoot trail that clearly is a horse trail, is not a main trail, uh, because there's hoof prints on it, and it's uh, you know clearly was just. 
uh, you know, it's not much of a trail, but they've been riding horses on enough to make it to make it packed down, and it's a horse trail. Uh, but as you can tell, it's not the main one. Others, there are junctions where it's not clear, and there are no, other than at the trailheads, there are no signs along this trail to keep you going the right way. So you're on your own. Kind of an adventure. Um, it, it's a little bit frustrating to I ran into this today. Uh, as I said, I really need to get on the road tomorrow to get ahead of some weather. And uh, I did not even have time to do this hike today, but wanted to check it out anyways. So I squeezed in a hike I didn't have time for and ended up taking probably twice as long as I should have because of all these extra tra unofficial trails that are not marked. And of course the official ones are not even marked on maps either. So, oh well, I found the road. Uh, I'm up at the Haviland Lake campground uh, and I am going to walk the road back to uh, my camp. It's about a mile, it should be about a mile, mile and a half, something like that. But at least I know where the road is and there's no question of whether it's a road or a impromptu horse trail. All right, well, we're gonna get going back. Thanks for watching everybody. It did occur to me by the way, maybe I should stop filming my hikes because I go hiking frequently and I rarely have any extra excitement beyond just an enjoyable hike. Yet it seems like nearly every time I uh, couple <laughs> tried to film it, I end up with some extra adventure I wasn't planning on. So maybe I ought to just quit recording hikes, I don't know. But I am up here, as I said, at Haviland Lake uh, Campground. I'm right on Haviland Lake, of course, and that's just a short distance from where we are camped. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk back home now. Thanks for watching, everybody.